Hi, I'm James from The Paint People, and today we're reacting to an article on realsimple.com called These Seven Paint Trends Will Be Everywhere This Summer, According to Design Pros. So let's just take a look together and see what we think. So the author of this article is Katie Holdeff. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Almost certainly did not. So first off, we see cool blues. I feel like cool blues are going to be really big this summer, like aquas and baby blue. They're fun, bright, and summery. Think beyond the walls, thank goodness, <laughs> and consider painting cabinets, furniture, and other decor details. So right off the bat, uh, blue is a very, very fun dynamic color to use. It's one of the primary colors, both in paint and RGB as well. And what's great about it is it's extremely soothing. It's very evocative of water and sky, which is perfect for the summer. So right now it's very hot outside, right? It's also gonna be very cold in maybe a couple months over here in Canada. Try and incorporate them on things like furniture and decor pieces, maybe cabinets, but even that's a bit of a stretch. Only because if it suits the summer, but not necessarily the winter, then for half of the year, your walls are gonna look a bit out of place. I tend to prefer greens for kind of an all season type of color, which is why I'm really into green age and sage green nowadays, because it sort of has that blue base, I guess, but it's warmed up as well. So it's more transitional. Love blue, but maybe incorporate it on little accents here and there, little fixtures all that. Painted floors. Now this is an interesting one. If you follow any design blogs or magazines, you've probably seen some stylish homes with painted floors in recent months. Davis predicts this trend will continue. I think painted floors are going to continue to be big and I especially see checkerboards and stripes really enjoying a renaissance. So this is kind of interesting, right? If you have floors that are basically smooth textured or even kind of older wooden floor that you really want to reinvigorate. I mean, there's a couple ways to do it. One is basically stripping off the finish that's there, completely sanding it, starting from scratch essentially, and then restaining it. The other option, which is perhaps the more DIY friendly option, is painting the floors. And as long as you're prepping the space properly and you're getting a dedicated porch and floor paint or even something that's more epoxy related, so it's a little more resistant to abrasions, something that's designed for foot traffic essentially, then by painting your floor, it's gonna completely revitalize your space, right? And what's great about it too is it's easy to maintain because it's not a stain that maybe would overlap on itself and give you an inconsistent finish. Paint is paint. It's an opaque finish, so. And also, if you wanted to switch it up, you don't necessarily need to just stick to one color. You can do what they're suggesting, like checkerboard patterns and striping. So make sure you get a really good painter's tape for this. Don't just use your masking tape that, you know, you put up your bulletins and your shopping lists with or whatever. Get proper painter's tape. I'm a big fan of frog tape, not sponsored. Frog tape is amazing. It gives you really crisp lines every time just very easy to use. There's different strengths as well in terms of tackiness. So usually the stickier tapes, you don't wanna keep them on the surface too long because it may take off the finish that's underneath. And then there's the more delicate tapes that aren't quite as tacky, but they're more gentle. But for something like flooring, you probably wanna go with something pretty strong, pretty heavy duty. Next up we have warm and earthy hues. This one I can definitely vibe with. Summer 2022 is being led by warm, earthy spice colors, rich yellow such as my okra influenced carnaby yellow, comforting but sexy spice colors such as terracotta and the clay like Italian plaster, a bit of a dusty pink as well. So this is great. I love these warm colors and we're not just talking about beige and all that. You can have those warm earthy tones like those clay-based colors, your dusty rose, all that kind of stuff because it's evocative of travel, which is something that not a lot of us <laughs> have been able to do recently. So if you can bring the world home with you, I think that's a really cool thing to do, especially with color. So obviously greens are a great way to do this too because that's evocative of nature and all that. And greens and these earthy tones really are match made in heaven. So I love this take. Painted architectural interest. Okay, so this is an interesting one. I wanna see what they say here. So we're moving away from one color homes. A great way to add color is to use a picture rail or add a new color above. This Bridgerton-esque addition of architectural detail is witty and will add character, charm, and height in 
your home when done correctly. Remember, color above the picture rail will draw the eye up. Flood the same hue across the ceiling for a maximalist take on the look. So this is in reference to things that are already built into your home. Those architectural features that may exist like crown molding or wainscoting, chair railings, all that. And really this approach is all about accentuating those colors. So we really seem to do a bit of a flip flop when it comes to things like wainscoting and what color you're supposed to paint it. So traditionally you would have white or off-white woodworking. So that would include a chair railing that sort of splits your wall in half. You'd have that to be white and then you'd have your wall color above and below or two different colors to sort of separate things a bit. And then we sort of drifted away from that and chair railings became the same color as the wall because people didn't really like all the intricacies of all these architectural interests. So what they did was they just wanted to paint it all one color. And that has sort of continued up until today. So now we're going back to accentuating those things by painting it maybe a contrasting color. And it doesn't need to be black and white or something super polarizing. It could be something as subtle as, you know, a light warm gray and then a slightly mid-tone taupe or something, or even a white and an off-white. It doesn't need to be too dramatic. And what's cool here is the idea of making a space look taller. I think it's cool. I really like accentuating features that are already there. They were designed with a purpose, so why not show it off? Next we have soft watermelon shades. This is interesting. We are seeing a lot of our clients still craving a sense of calm and comfort in their homes. This desire for comfort is leading to more nature-inspired hues, such as pale ivory, greens, and blush pinks. I'm starting to call it the summer of watercolored watermelon. This is amazing because I love this color combination. I love anything that is soft, understated, but a bit greeny. And in this example, it's almost a cooler green, right? It has kind of a minty sort of frosty effect, which is an amazing match to these sort of dusty pinks that they're also incorporating. This is actually very similar to the color I picked for my bathrooms. And if you know me, I love going a bit cooler in those more spa-like parts of your home or the places you wanna really relax, like bathrooms and bedrooms. This is more of a living area that they're giving, this example on the website. And I find that interesting. It's another place you probably wanna relax and feel a little more kind of sunk in a bit. Personally, I like to go a little bit warmer in those areas because it is kind of an open space and everything is gonna fit together a bit, bit more cohesively. But if you wanted to sort of section things off and have something a little bit different, this is a great, great option. And this palette is absolutely beautiful. This is very much an extremely light off-white version of what I used in my primary bedroom, so I'm all on board here. Matte, comma, textured finishes. We are gravitating toward flatter satin and lime wash finishes, which are feeling clean, fresh, and bright throughout the home. So just to clarify, finishes are a bit finicky, right? Because different companies define things as different finishes. I wouldn't call satin a flatter finish. It's actually one of the shinier finishes, especially in interior paint. So lime wash paint is very popular nowadays, and it does have that matte slash textured finish, right? It's a bit chalky and very personal, like no wall will look the same, which is part of its appeal. It's one of the easier ways to have some sort of texture through paint. You could obviously get wallpaper because a lot of wallpapers do have textural components to it that are really fun to, play with and touch. <laughs> but if you're going with paint, then lime wash is a great way to do that. If you don't want to go through that process, then an ultra flat paint will do something a little bit similar, at least in that chalky texture quality. Most notably, Ferro and Ball. Ferro and Ball has some of the flattest paints you can get for the inside of your home. And finally, murals make a comeback. Um, wow, I feel wholeheartedly that artists are finally getting their moment with wall murals. So what's interesting is the paint company that I helped manage, one of the co-owners is a fine artist, and I'm talking portrait quality, like really, really gifted artist. And in the late 80s, early 90s, there was a ton of murals that he was painting, right? You know, clouds, jungles, cityscapes that sort of matched the the condominium we were painting. So the windows looked like they just continued on forever as the mural was painted onto the surrounding walls. But then we found out that 
we weren't painting murals anymore. We were painting over murals. So our customers would call us back 10 years later and then we would be painting over with something that was neutral, like a light and warm gray. But now it looks like they're coming back into style. And I think it all comes back to just trying to make your home as personal as possible, as inviting as possible, a real representation of you as a person. We wanna be as happy as we can at home because a lot of people are spending more time at home than they did a couple years ago. So I love this. I absolutely love that it's making a comeback. Um, maybe we'll have to do some more of them on different job sites. So I'm gonna leave this article down in the description below so you can read along. Uh, really cool stuff. If there's anything that we touched on in this video that you want me to go into more detail on, whether it's the lime wash, the painting of the floors, different paint colors and all these categories that I like, AKA one of those cool blues, Celestial by Sherwin-Williams, really good paint color, or Rojo Dust by Sherwin-Williams, which is a beautiful kind of slightly rosy terracotta clay color. Anything you wanna know, let me know down below and I'll see you in the next one.